Allah to say the sin, I'm going to change it into hasanat. What kind of mercy is this? Remembrance of Allah removes the sins, attracts divine mercy. You know, brothers and sisters, the word dhikr means remembrance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only instructs the human being to do dhikr. Everything else does tasbih. Malaika, they do tasbih. The mountains, they do, it does tasbih. مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Allah doesn't tell the mountain to do dhikr. Allah doesn't tell malaika to do dhikr. Allah doesn't tell the trees to do dhikr. Why? Because dhikr means remembrance. You only ask someone to do dhikr if they have the potential to forget. Do malaika forget for them to do dhikr? Does the moon, the sun, are these entities that forget? Only insan is invited to remember. Because some Arab linguists, they say the word insan, some say that it comes from the word nisyan, which means to forget. Because it's in the nature of the human being to forget. This is why Allah has legislated salah five times a day. If there was no salah, you know, we human beings, we forget who we are. So Allah has to remind us. He makes us put our faces on the ground. So we remember where we came from and where we're going. If it wasn't for this salah on a regular basis, many of us would become like Fir'aun. Ana rabbukum al Allah wants you to physically go down and rub your face on the earth to know who is the Lord and who is the servant. There's a hadith from the Holy Prophet where he says, "Ma jalasa qawmun yadhkurun Allah." There is not a single group of people who come together and they remember Allah. Illa nada bihim munad min al-sama. Except that a caller will call out to this congregation. Qumu faqad baddala Allahu sayyatikum hasanat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala. A caller will call out to this majlis, to this gathering, saying that rise up for Allah. Not only has He forgiven. You know, it would be merciful if Allah says, you have a clear record now. It would be merciful of Allah Azza wa Jal to say, you know what? The sin is still on your record, but I'm not going to punish you. You know, sometimes if you speed, right? If you have a heavy foot, you get a ticket, but maybe they'll waive the fine, right? You don't pay a fine, but it's still on your record. Maybe they can remove it from your record. If we commit sin and Allah says it's on your record but there's no adab, Allah would be merciful. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will remove the adab and I'll remove it from your record, this would also be a rahmah. But for Allah to say the sin, I'm going to change it into hasanat, what kind of mercy is this? That I will transform the sins into good deeds and I will reward you. This is the power of dhikr. Is this a Lord who is eager to punish? Brothers and sisters, there was a man, Hassan al-Basri, he comes to Imam Zain al-Abideen. He says, Ya ibn Rasulullah, ajibtu liman naja, kayfa naja? You know, sometimes you meet people, you know, where they're not that religious, and they're shocked. They're like, how are you so religious? It's difficult. It's going to be difficult to go to Jannah. So many do's and don'ts. This man is saying the same thing to Imam Zain al-Abideen. 
I'm amazed. How does someone attain salvation? So much red tape, so many rules. You know, you, you look at the book of our maraja, it's a thick book. So much haram, mustahab, makruh, a lot of rules. A lot of do's and don'ts. What does the imam say? Does the imam say, you know, you're right, it's difficult. The imam says, Amma ana fa'ajibtu liman halak kayfa halak ma'asa'ati rahmatillah. He says, as for me, I am shocked, I am amazed at the one who is punished by Allah in the hellfire despite the fact that Allah is so merciful. This is really ajeeb to go to the hellfire. 